away from Gareth Bale, as Sid <laughs> oh. mentioned, our old friend Cristiano Ronaldo, moments after the full-time whistle. Uh, talked about the fact he wasn't happy. Uh, more quotes coming from him, Sid, saying it's not about money, it's about uh, broken promises. What's going on? Well, I mean, in a way, listen to what he said immediately after the final. And bear in mind, of course, that it is immediately after the final. Then listen to what he says about an hour and a half later when he comes through the mix zone. And he says, look, it wasn't the right time. I shouldn't have said it then. But when you bottle something up, when you keep it, when you keep it inside, when you keep it inside and you keep it inside, and when you're an honest person and you speak from the heart things end up coming out. It wasn't the right time that they come out. In other words, what he's doing, of course, is confirming to us that this sense that he has of not being fully valued, this sense that he has of, of, of not having the status, perhaps, that he would like or the backing that he would like, that's been coming for a very long time and we've known this, which is why we've had these kind of things before. But here comes the next bit. Listen to that, listen to what he says an hour and a half later, and then listen to what's said in the meantime by the president, Florentino Perez. And he says, we hear this kind of thing every year, and then nothing happens. Now, in terms of a kind of a slap down, that's about as, as significant as they get. And Florentino Perez also saying, I'm very pleased with Cristiano Ronaldo, who has five European Cups, the same number as me. And I think in that, you see, if you like, the staging of the distance between these two men. Now, that's not to say this necessarily means he goes, because again, it's very difficult to make happen. Again, you've got two people who are in a position of if you like, pride more than anything else, keeping them, keeping them kind of apart. But they both know, I think, fundamentally, that they kind of need each other. Now, at some stage, Real Madrid are going to need to confront um, the construction of a post-Ronaldo era. It may well be that they think deep down that it could be time for that. But right now, off the back of a third Champions League in a row, in which Ronaldo has been your top scorer again, mm. and by the way, he's a competition's top scorer, six seasons running, it's very, very difficult to engineer in a situation in which he leaves and everybody feels satisfied. In fact, I would say it's almost impossible to make that happen. Raph, he's not going anywhere, is he? I don't think he is. Um, I think he came very, very close to going to PSG a couple of years ago, but that's um, no longer an option, at least not as long as Neymar is there. PSG might have some financial fair play regulations that will prevent them from signing that kind of player full stop anyway. Um, the reason I think this is happening is because of the tax problem that he has. He feels not backed enough by the club. He wants a uh, contract extension, which I think in the position of Ramadou is very hard to do because uh, he's still got three more years left and then he's going to be way into his mid-30s. Um, very tough even for Ramadou to say, you know what, just to keep you happy, here, have another two years. So I think they will just have to write this out and I don't think he has actually that many options unless, unless he feels that his time in Europe is up, he's done everything and he's just going to go now and make a lot of money in China or maybe in the US, but I just don't see that for him.